What is up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Ryan Myers Expeditions. Today we're going spearfishing with your guys' favorite by far, Justin Lee. But first, he's gonna teach me how to shoot this bow. Now, I he gave this to me a while ago. He refused to teach me for the longest time. Finally, I've got arrows, I've got the line release, I've got the, the shooting release? The shooting release. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing, but I'm excited. My archery is like my spear fishing. I am not trained. I just know what works for me, and hopefully it works for Ryan. We'll see, but the cool thing is, can you guys see this? I had this kook leave his bow at my house. He's a boy from Florida. I don't know if you know Kelly Slater, a couple world time champion. So what happened was, I'm living at Justin's house as I do when I'm poor and homeless and wandering the world. I find this bow in Justin's garage. Justin never lets me shoot his bow. So I find this bow and I'm like, what's the deal with this bow? Can I, can I shoot this bow? And he's like, well, it's broken. And then he said, if you fix it and it fits you, you can have it. So flip it over. It's got Kelly Slater's name on it. I don't know where it came from or the backstory on it at all. Somebody left it here a long time ago? Well, I took Kelly hunting a couple of times and he shot a ram with me a few times. Uh, he probably doesn't want to talk about that because he's completely vegan now and kind of a weirdo. <laughs> But uh, no, Kelly came out, he, he, he did some hunting with me and my buddy Shane, and uh, I guess somebody um, overextended it, so it rolled the cams over and it was basically useless at the point. And he dropped it off to me and said, hey, um, go fix this. And knowing Kelly, I was all like, he's never gonna pay me for it. So and how many years went by? <laughs> like six. And then I came along, found it rusting in his closet. This is a 15 year old bow. So, and I and you've had it what now a year and a half I've had it a year and a half yeah it has <laughs> so not shot I had it at my house for like five years and so if Kelly's watching and hopefully we will we'll see it Ryan thanks you for the bow I do thank you so much Kelly and Justin yes. anyways I'm so so freaking excited to start my hunting journey like I've always wanted to and now I'm living here on the big island and it's just the perfect place to go hunting anytime you want. I've got the legend Justin here to sort of teach me. Where am I shooting from? You gotta shoot from right here. I'm walking all the way back here to 20 yards. <laughs> I This will literally be my first shot ever with this bow. That's it. I, I adjusted the peep sight and that's it. Look, the reason we're gonna shoot close is just to know that we're somewhere in the bar park, ballpark. You know you have to knock an arrow. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Okay. <laughs> Literally no clue what I'm doing. Okay, got my Bro, I, I go 100 feet for moves. <laughs> Should be illegal. He can't even knock an arrow. <laughs> Have you ever used that release before? Yeah, once. Okay. I mean, when I, when I put the peep sight in. That's gotcha. it. Gotcha. Okay. And I Googled it. You Googled it. That's the same release I have. Is it? Yes. I picked a good one. Yeah. Whatever yeah. you do, don't I know, touch I know. it. Okay. I got my little thing. Okay. I got my little thing. So, use the, so draw back. Use the peep sight right and use that top pin. You're supposed to twist it, right? I, you, you, eventually you won't have to, the string will twist. But just put that top green right in the old of block. Green, I'm curled all the way over the pin. Bro, I think your 20 yard pin is on. Yeah? Yeah, so that just means, so what it is, he's supposed to aim at the O. That means that his top pin, sorry, I've, I don't know this YouTube game. I've, they want me to start one, so I'm gonna try. But that means his top pin, because your arrow at 20 yards shouldn't drop much. So if it's on at three yards, it should be on at 20 yards. So let's see. I'm so excited! Let me make sure. Yep, 20 yards. 20 yards. Okay. All right. Let's see this. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, I'm so pumped. I got my little thing, I got my little guy behind. I got my stance. <laughs> You're good. Got my palm flat. Thank you, John Dudley. Got my little nose guy. Got my anchor points. Got my finger curled. Got my back tension. Boom, bro. Is that the center of the O? That's the center of the O. <laughs> what? Oh my gosh. I'm gonna take full credit for that. Bro. 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 Animals are gonna die. Screw to spearfishing, dude. Where's the pig? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. You got, a, you got a broad head I can twist on now here? Now you gotta see if you can re re replicate it. If you can do that two or three times in a row, then we know he didn't step on dog poop. 
For those of you that don't know that phrase, you didn't grow up in Hawaii. Because if you step on dog poop, we call it dog shit. It means that you're super, super lucky. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it worked last time. My stance, put my finger behind the trigger. Oh, you gotta twist my little peep sight. My peep sight twisted. So for those of you guys, the reason, the only reason that he's stretching his peep sight is because his string hasn't stretched out completely yet. Eventually it'll stretch out and it'll settle and you won't have to do it. But your form looks good, man. It's a little off. I'm not that bad. Okay, okay, come on, keep going. <laughs> Bro, I hit the target. He's only about 12 inches off to the right and high on that second one. All right, all right. Come on, focus. Well, I got your my, palm. my peep sight screwed up again. Up already. No, my peep sight. Here, I got you. Twisted. <laughs> your palm. Think about your palm. All right, all right. I'm flat, flat your palm. I'm flat, I'm flat. I got my little anchor points. I got my nose. Make sure that you're level. Okay, come on, you got one more arrow. That's freaking close. Then at 20 yards, you should be stacking your pins. They should all be in the O. These are literally my first shots I've ever taken in my life, Justin. Well, oh. you're claiming your first shot like you're... Well, my first shot was really, really freaking good. <laughs> I think my arms are getting tired now. <laughs> <laughs> you see that red mark? Yeah, I hit myself That's twice. That's because he hit himself. So, where'd that one go? Right next to your first shot. So with archery, it's all about consistency. You can't fix inconsistency. So, bro, look at his thrust too. So that means that his sight is probably on. It's just that these two is him not focusing. I get a little well, excited. It's a good start. I get it's a really, start. really good start. Bro, where are the pigs at? <laughs> he needs some more practice before we put him in front of some live animals. What we have learned with Ryan is he's a great free diver. He can kind of shoot sometimes, which that proves. His hunting ability is what really needs to have as a product. So now, we'll really see when we get some animals in front, if he can be quiet, move slow, and treat, the, treat a pig like a, a big uku. The uku's the, <laughs> the moose, the, I mean the, the pigs don't come to. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> You're getting tired already. My <laughs> arms are so tired. I need to go to the gym. My flat. My little thing. I'm my trigger over. Nice. So, the biggest thing with archery is consistency. You know, you have to be do everything the exact same. I mean. There's so many things that if you don't do it the same, you're gonna have a different result. And so the only way that you can change or adjust, you know, your pins or anything like that is if you're consistent. So that's, if you're, for, if you're just picking up a archery equipment and you're just starting, make sure you get a bow that you're very comfortable with, that when you put it in your, you draw it, everything is smooth and comfortable and uh, that you can shoot it multiple times consistently. Can I get a weaker bow? Yeah. Need a lighter one? That's for Sam. Like a chick bow? <laughs> like, a, like a kid bow? He does have some really nice titties. Look at these things. Get the titties out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now the treasure. Pressure. Ryan. Yeah. The world's biggest pig is 20 yards away right now. Did you shoot this pig? It's like equivalent of shooting a 22 pound Dentex in Ciros. <laughs> They will write scores about you, but you have to hit the O. I have to hit the O? You have to hit the O, bro. If you don't hit the O, that Dentex, that... Rocks up in 60 meters? Exactly. <laughs> or that... Uh, Wait, what about the wind? Borzilla. Hey, bro. The... <laughs> hey, Dentex aren't just going to let you shoot them. Come on. Don't blow it. Gone. Thing ran away. Gone. <laughs> the pig actually even scratched himself before he ran away. That's not good. Well, 
I mean, what that means that what that tells me is that you're just kind of all over the place. I'm all over the place. Yeah, you're used. You you haven't shot a bull before. No. So your muscles aren't used to shooting. No, my muscles are nothing, dude. I'm a sore. I need to like. <laughs> I don't even know if I can spearfish now. Do you need me to load your gun today? <laughs> but that just means that you've got to shoot no. more, strengthen yourself up more. You got an extra target? Can I take that one home? Your arrows will probably get stopped in that one. Yeah, you could. <laughs> Guys, that was freaking rad. We are going to go spearfishing now, and we will see you in the water. So one of the things that's so unbelievably cool about getting to dive this other side of the island with Justin is seeing stuff that, like, I just never see. And it's so cool to dive almost a, it's almost like a new ocean over there. And like even this goatfish right here, I have no idea what this goatfish is. I've seen small ones, but I've never seen one this big. I mean, that was like an actual like shooter sized goat, but I didn't pull the trigger because I didn't know what it was. But regardless, that's the theme of like this whole entire area over here is you just see stuff that you do not usually see. And that is the number one reason why I love to go hunting over there. So the first fish of the day was Justin with this beautiful Moana Kali. Both of us feel kind of the same way on these fish, that they are just so delicious and we have a really hard time passing on the big ones. Giant fish. Hey, what's the other kind of goat down there? The white one. The white one with the butt in the middle? Yeah. Goat fish. <laughs> Something you don't eat. <laughs> no, okay. Them. All right. Nice goat. Same shot you always get. The same shot you always get. <laughs> the shaft is on this side. It means it's cruising from left, from right to left into my strong arm. <laughs> It was kind of rainy out there, but this rainbow kind of appeared out of nowhere and we followed it over to our next fish. So we followed that rainbow and we came across this beautiful red kumu. And the kumus are just so special because I do not see them on the Kona side. You only really see them over here and I haven't shot one in like five years. Nothing fancy here. All I want to do is make sure I don't ruin any meat and get a nice head shot, which I do. And then it was such a quick dive that if he gets stuck in the rock like that, I'll just make sure that I get them all out in one dive and secure them so that an eel doesn't get them or a shark or I don't have to make another dive down there to go pick them up. I haven't shot one of these in at least five years and I was freaking stoked. This is the trophy fish to come out of that side of the island. That will be stoked. Uh, that will be stoked. That was a fucking good one, huh? Heck yeah. That's that been a long time. Been been a long time. So in this next dive here, I come across a moo. And what's so cool about, again, diving this side is that there's so many of kind of like that mid-range moo. You know, those two pounders that I would honestly shoot a lot because I love to eat them. But whenever I see one that's just a little bit bigger, I tend to take that one home for dinner. So you can see how much life there is down here on the bottom. There's just it just supports so much life. And again, I don't know if that's because it's more productive over here with the kind of nutrients coming out of the rivers or if it just really gets less, so much less impact than the Kona side. But you can see how many goats are just cruising around, big blue uhus, omilus, nothing really cares over here. You know, there's, there's just a lot of life and they just don't see a lot of people. As usual, I'll kind of take my time, I'll be really selective, I'm looking around, I'm looking up, I'm looking to see if those ukus are sneaking in. Justin had actually spotted like a 25 pounder this day, so I was kind of like, that was on my mind all day long, I was really looking for one of those, but take my time, I eventually, kind of pick out these two moo. You can see that one there on the top of the screen. It's kind of cruising along. And behind him to the left, there'll be his buddy. And that was a bigger fish, and a fish that kind of I decided I'll take that one. And he came right in. You can see him there. He came, he's coming in, and then he's going low down into the crack. And I kind of move here and scare everything. But luckily, I don't scare him enough. And he's looking to go, in, to go into that hole there. But I'm able to close the distance and get a shot, and then he goes straight into that cave, and I'm not able to get him out on this dive. I actually go to the surface, and I have to come back down for another one. Recovering a fish is one of the most dangerous situations that us spear fishermen get ourselves into, and that's because you guys, we don't take enough time on the surface to relax and get down there and make sure that we have plenty of time to get this fish out on our first dive. If you end up doing repetitive dives, you end up getting more tired and more tired, especially with the current. So it's so important to take a long time to breathe up and relax before you do your first attempt at getting down there to the fish. 
you can see the shaft is stuck here and I kind of have to wiggle it and twist it. And that's to get the flopper to kind of move around and dislodge itself so I can get the fish out. Once I get him out, it's real easy. Somehow I managed to get him in through the gills and then out through the mouth. Regardless, I was stoked. I love shooting these things and I love to eat them. Nice little moonlight. So one of my favorite reasons for diving with Justin is how well we dive together in a team. Neither of us need to kill anything. You know, we're both professionals. We both are just as happy to see the other guys shoot the fish. It's just, it's just no worries out there. It's a super relaxing way to dive. We hunt together. We'll pass our fish back and forth so that we can do those deeper dives without having any kind of drag on our belts. We'll pass the float back and forth if we're dragging the float. And we just really help each other and it's a super enjoyable way to dive. So there was a Omilu house here and he had seen a big moo go into it, his dive before. And he actually told me, he's like, go down, lay right here, make a little bit of noise and maybe it'll pop back out of that hole right there. So that's exactly what I did. Went down here, laid on the bottom. You can see that big blue who there's just so much freaking life over here. That big Omilu was down there going in the house when I got down. And I'm gonna just go down there, take my time, wait and see what happens. After sitting down there for a little bit and the moo not appearing and me looking around, looking for those ukus, I decided it's on your way up. And this is again, another extremely dangerous situation that you guys have gotta be prepared for because this happens a lot in Florida. I remember this a lot where you're not, you're shooting fish midwater. So you'll go to the bottom and then you'll kind of wait till you have to go up. I mean, you've spent all of your oxygen, you're on the bottom and then you're leaving. And then once you leave the bottom, you'll see that grouper or that snapper or that cobia or African pompano or whatever it is that comes in attracted to you. And you've got to know exactly what you do in that situation. And so that's what happened here. I'm on my way up and then I see the moo pop out of the hole. And I'm like, huh, well maybe I'll see if I can get the shot. And I was able to kind of sink back down, get a top down dive bomb shot on a moo, which almost never works for me. But the reason I'm able to do that is because I know that I know Justin is right there above me. I know that I'm well within my limits. And I know if anything were to happen to me, he's gonna be sitting right there waiting to rescue me and it won't be an issue. That was kinda cool. Came out of the cave, huh? So guys, really, really try and avoid that situation. If you're leaving the bottom, leave the bottom. If you see that fish, it's still gonna be there for another dive. Try and be really wary of that situation. Justin's always on the hunt for small moo out there, just right size for his grandma. I always give him crap for shooting the tiny ones, but honestly, that's what he was looking for. He picked up one of these, and we had enough fish for the day, and we were heading home. Check this thing out. Beautiful kumu. Do not see very many of these at all, but I'm gonna cook it up the same way that I do the Moanakali. You only really get the kumus on the other side of the island. There's just not that many over here on the Kona side, but stoked to eat this thing. I don't think I've ever eaten one of these. It's possible that we ate a couple five years ago when I shot them, but we haven't eaten one in a long time and we've definitely never cooked one ourselves. So, freaking stoked. Just gonna steam it up real quick and easy. So all we did was a real quick, simple stuffing of lemon, ginger, garlic. I cut three slices on this guy. It's going in the oven at 350 for like 45 minutes. It's late, I'm starving. We'll see what happens. Ah! The cheeks are stuck! All right guys, it looks amazing. I lost a little bit more skin on the top than I would have liked. Oh well, it never gets old. I swear, no matter how many times I do this, it just, it just doesn't get old. So excited. The best goat fish in Hawaii is the kumu. So good. So, so good with the rice and the steam. There's no other way to eat this. Guys, we've simply outdone ourselves on this one. Unbelievable fish. We have absolutely mastered the steaming, huh? Mm -hmm. We've mastered it. I remember coming here years ago, like five years ago, and watching people steam it. This is all I ever wanted. This is the only way we want to eat it. 
This is it. Mm -hmm. We got two more moo in there, guys. Yes. Stoked. Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the beginning of my bow hunting journey because there's gonna be a lot more of that on this channel, I hope. Anyways, we also filmed Justin Lee's first video today. Hopefully, maybe, we'll see. Go let him know down in the comments. Let him know that you want to see him complete today's video, make an episode of this, and then start his channel so that you guys don't have to all comment on my channel asking for Justin. We're gonna feast. Leave a like if you haven't already. Subscribe if you're not, because we have so much more coming for you right here on Ryan Myers Expeditions.